Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Zal, and the War Within expansion is approaching oh so very, very soon. Some of us are going to be able to experience it early with the early access, while everybody else will get to play it on the actual release date. Whichever one you end up playing, the beta realms are eventually going to be going down. However, even this week, we saw changes for a handful of classes on the beta, though in not official capacity. A lot of them have come in through hotfixes, which are kind of like a come and go type of thing. They can add a hotfix one day and then remove it the next day, so it's really hard to try exactly what is getting changed for classes or what is rather set in stone in terms of buffs and nerfs. However, during my research, I did end up coming across some of the more set in stone changes that happened to the class of warrior, and I haven't taken a look at the class of warrior, and we haven't checked back with them in a quite a while. So I really wanted to do a bit of more of a deeper dive specifically on what happened to the warrior, covering all the different hero specs, as well as spec specific changes, especially for the spec of prop warrior. And how does that fare after this massive global tank nerf? Spoiler, it is actually quite amazing right now. But before all that, if you guys want to see more regular class updates like these for the war with it, be sure to follow the channel and subscribe. Otherwise, let's dive right in. So what has all been going on with the Class of Warrior over the last few weeks? Well, a little bit, but not too much. Most of it is hero spec stuff, but some of the hero spec changes have been quite significant. Starting off, we have some smaller adjustments for the specs like Colossus. Colossus has been... I guess it's hard to tell if really there's a lot of arms warrior representation right now in the beta because based on logs in terms of participation within mythic plus keys like 10 and above there really is not that many arms warriors however the few and we'll talk about that in the arms warrior section specifically the few logs that we do have colossus has been on average not that big of like a pool of keys for us and not a big a pool of data for us to draw from but from a limited pool that we have colossus seems to be doing a little bit better and more favorable for the spec of arms warrior the ability of demolish synergizes with them super super well and it gives them this burst here profile that's a little bit better at two target cleaving and i feel like it adjusts pretty well with some of the changes that we've seen for the class like arms warrior such as the change to a blade master storm instead of getting the double blade storm Instead, you're an avatar, you can have super strikes, which actually synergizes incredibly well with the demolish ability. That being said, Colossus is getting nerfed a little bit for arms primarily, but a little bit for prot too. Like with things like mountain and muscle scars, instead of dealing 5% more damage, taking 2.5% less damage and size increased by 5%, it's now 4% damage in increase. So slight reduction there. At the very least, thank goodness they didn't end up nerfing the size increase by, you know, any lower. I actually think they should double it to make it 10%, just to make it so that you really stand out from all the other warriors. I really like the flavor of this talent specifically. For armors, though, abilities such as practice strikes are actually seen a bit of a nerf. It goes from a 20% damage increase to mortal strike and cleave down to 15%. Just a bit of tuning. I don't think it's really going to kill off Colossus for arms warriors at all. For protection warriors, Colossus does get a little bit better, like only slightly better, not too much better, because it's uh, very, very... It's not as often played and explored over here respect compared to Mount Thane, which synergizes so well into the prop playstyle. And like, they really gotta do a bit more work, I think, for Colossus as prop warrior, particularly just because, I mean, you can just see how giddy I am about the idea of a Mount Thane prop warrior. It is so good, oh. But Colossus, they're trying to make it a little bit more appealing. Things such as Tide of Battle will now increase the damage of Revenge by 10% instead of 5%, so a little bit more AoE output. But also they're making the capstone with Dominance of the Colossus a little bit better. So the way the prop warrior normally plays as the colossus, I guess arms and prod both, is you uh, engage into combat and then you can use the ability of your colossus might as soon as po humanly possible. The ability does a ton of damage to the target, especially if it crits, and also puts a debuff called wrecked on the target. Now, this wreck comes from the passive, or rather can be modified by dominance of the Colossus to be further increased. As you use certain abilities like your uh, Colossus uh, Chill Slam, X or Execute or Mortal Strike, and I think it is the Cleave ability on three targets as Arms Warrior, you get this buff called Colossus Might. And as you build up these stacks of Colossus Might, you actually increase the damage of an X demolished by quite a bit. This also helps increase damage of your other abilities if you are talented incorrectly. Not only does this increase the overall effectiveness of your next demolish, but it also actually helps amplify the passive here of Dominance of the Colossus. Which reads, enemies afflicted by demolish take up to normally 10% more damage from you and deal up to 5% less damage to you. For prop warriors, that number goes up from a 10% damage increase to a 20% damage increase. So when you go for a big old colossus slam doing a million damage at least guaranteed you do 20 percent more damage to that target which is kind of huge in terms of the playstyle of like 
being able to dish out a ton of damage as Prot Warrior. And Prot already has a quite a few like damaging components where you could do a significant bit of overall output as protection in particular. Like in a single target boss fight with mad executes as the boss gets slow, that damage is not negligible. The AoE damage you can do with the Dimash ability doing quite a bit of AoE damage together with things like Thunderous Roar as well as with a big shield charge which does like cleave damage. Lots of damage to primary target, less damage to everybody else. Combine that together with booming voice for 20%, also additional damage with a big ravager cleaving everything around you. There is a potential to do a ton of damage as protection, which is kind of interesting. I wonder if that'll be enough for protection warriors to start picking it up. I think if Colossus give you a like a better defensive window or something along those lines, I think maybe it'll be a little considered. But if you're just looking for raw damage, protection definitely has it in spades. From there on, we have a few adjustments for things like Mountain Thane and Slayer. Starting with Mountain Thane, just a couple of handful of changes. Mountain Thane's main ability is going to be technically it's lightning strikes, but the best part of it is going to be as you deal damage to the target, or every time you bloodthirst there's a chance, your next uh, a thunderclap becomes a thunder blast. This is a big core ability of this playstyle, which transforms your thunderclap into a, a hard hitting ability that deals astronomical amounts of damage. It is amazing with just how good it is it is the best part about it and visually is just a splendor to watch every time you use the ability plus every time you press avatar you're next to thunder blasts or thunder claps are guaranteed thunder blasts which is super super fun it gives you quite a bit of that guaranteed burst and the damage this ability can do is um significant or some may say it's quite significant especially in aoe it's probably one of the hardest hitting abilities compared to like bloodthirst like your basic rage generators bloodthirst rage and blow execute i think this one probably could compete pretty up there uh but they are nerfing the damage of that thunder blast by a little bit like five percent it's not that crazy it's not that bad but they are also increasing mountain thing playstyle uh, a little the main mechanic of lightning strikes allows your damage and abilities to have a chance to summon up a lightning strike that strikes the target for additional nature damage generating your rage and strikes occur more often inside of avatar to give you a bit of a better burst window those are getting amplified by 30 percent and there are some other talents that end up playing around lightning strikes as well like for example thorn's might which allows lightning strikes to generate more rage that is interesting but gathering clouds allows your auto attacks to trigger lightning strikes 30 percent more often so if you can have like some kind of like a big high haze build where fury maybe could spec into some like frenzied and rage and get a bunch of haste out that could feel really really good together for prod this is also really good because you auto attack quite aggressively as prod as well so this is a nice kind of combination on top of the talent of ground current when lightning strikes deals additional damage to nearby targets not the craziest amount of damage uh but the additional damage is also amplified by 25 percent on top of it so it's a nice little buff of mountain thing regardless however where we saw the biggest buffs as of the last few weeks has been for the playstyle of slayer and i thought to myself really isn't this thing like the most popular pick and if you're a fury warrior yes it is a very popular choice you know how there are certain hero talent uh hero spec and class spec combinations that are just iconic like a demonology warlock the one that deals with those demons they summon summoning up massive ginormous demons like a pit lord a chaos mother and the overlord as a diabolus demonology warlock like a diabolus go hand in hand unholy death knight with its army of undead with the riders of the apocalypse for even a big army those go hand in hand things such as let's say like um void weaver shadow priest i mean void priest i mean this is such thematic combos that are just so good and kind of iconic and i think slayer is very quickly becoming a very iconic one with fury it is the preferred play style for many if you look at a lot of vlogs and a lot of data we have on the beta a lot of people prefer to play it but also it synergizes itself into the fury where play style so much better ever since fury picked up blade storm which in previous expansions like Shadowlands, it was kind of like a an one-off button. You would use it to proc certain effects, but you didn't necessarily want to use Blazestorm if there's other high value abilities there. So it was kind of low in priority, low on a totem pole. They try to make Blazestorm as best as possible here. And when you pair it together with Unhinged, where you during Blazestorm, you just automatically bloodthirst at a target. That a cleave can also hit multiple targets, and Slayer helps interact with the ability to kind of extend its duration even further. It is so, so good together. It makes Bladestorm a very powerful cooldown for Fury all in all together. But Slayer on top of it saw additional buffs, like the Slayer's Dominance ability. Wherever you are attacking a primary target with any of your base abilities and even auto attacks, there's a pretty high chance you will hit him with a Slayer's Dominance. I'm kind of waiting for the proc. I'm actually surprised I didn't get a proc it so far, because normally this ability procs 
a lot more regularly than this is a bug there there we go so marked for execution is going to be the buff that you are trying to get out of the target there goes the little strike there and you can see the slayer strike it deals a decent bit of damage on its own compared to like bloodthirst and Rage and Blow in comparison. So that damage has been amplified by 100%. It also applies a debuff of Mark for Execution, which helps increase the raw damage of your Execute per stack of this debuff. Plus, you can also further modify the debuff itself to be even more effective with things like Critical Strikes. Besides this, we have a barrage of other smaller talents as part of a Slayer gameplay that have been buffed further, like Show No Mercy, where your actual Slayer's dominance puts a debuff, making the enemy take more damage from Execute. The uh, ability of Show No Mercy increases the crit chance of that Execute and crit damage of that Execute by 15%, and that is per mark of Execution also. With the passive of Overwhelming Blades, which is kind of like how you end up synergizing your Bladestorm as part of your gameplay. Whenever you use the Bladestorm ability, it applies a debuff of Overwhelm to the target and it stacks up. They recently increased the amount of uh, stacks that this ability can actually have uh, to 12. So normally you would get like a 1% damage increase for 10 stacks, so 10% damage buff there. Now it goes up to 12% and this ability can be maintained pretty easily either through actual Bladestorms, Raid on Proxy Bladestorms, or through execute so you're essentially looking at a bit of a ramp up but 12 percent more damage that you do to the target which is not insignificant amount and with it being blaze stormy it can also cleave to multiple targets then we have choice nodes challenge such as fears follow through where bloodthirst critical strike critical strikes increase the damage of index bloodthirst by 20 percent up from 10 percent and this applies for arms warrior in terms of their mortal strike ability or you can pick up opportunists where instead your critical strike chance and critical strike damage of filler abilities like overpower and rage and blow is increased by 30 percent instead of by 10 and 15 percent 10 percent for overpower 50 percent for rage and blow making your basic I guess you would call them quote unquote filler abilities, but I know that Fury has had builds centered around Rage and Blow specifically. So for them, that would actually would could be potentially a decent option with a high crit build. And right below that, we have Slayer's Malice, which increases the damage of those overpowers and Rage and Blows, just the damage, not just crit damage, by 30% on top of that. So you can have some really strong overpowers for Arms Warrior, which is could be pretty good during downtime with a high crit build, or some really nasty Rage and Blows for the spec of Fury Warrior. Now, take a look at all the information we have so far. For Fury, Slayer is definitely by far the favored playstyle for a good bit of beta. A lot of Fury Warriors do prefer it as a playstyle, and it is highly effective. And it's very, very strong. So, this Slayer buff is essentially a direct buff for Fury. Yeah, it is a buff for Arms Warrior technically also, but this is much more preferred for Fury in particular. So Fury Warriors that were excited about playing Slayer specifically, you guys have seen a significant advantage and significant damage increases there. But even if you were expecting to play something like a Mounted Thay, which looks absolutely amazing in terms of the visual splendor that it comes with, even that one is going to amp by as much, but, or by a little bit, but not nearly as much as what Slayer is receiving in terms of buffs. And that's essentially the changes, quote unquote, for like Fury Warrior in a way, because Fury hasn't really gotten too many updates since then. They kind of buffed him up last time and they kind of kept him that way without toting him down. Arms Warriors, though, I feel like they're getting beat up quite a bit. And I'm kind of surprised by this specifically. Abilities such as your Mortal Strike are further removed or decreased by 15%. So it's just a raw reduction. Okay. Sounds bad, but is there more? Then there's also overpower damage reduced by 20%. Okay, Dal, is there more? Normally when they nerf something, they usually buff something else. Like, are they just reducing some of the more burst your abilities, but increasing, like, your bleed damage or your blaze storm damage or anything like that? No, just a nerf. And that nerf also went into the pre-patch as well, uh, over on Live Realms, which was like, all right, I guess arms where he gets nerfed. <laughs> And the funny thing is, a pre-patch, it wasn't like there were elemental shamans or beastmaster hunters that were just absolutely dominating in single target damage. Like, Arms Warriors have had their time to shine here and there, especially in execute windows, but just a nerf on top of it. And then for Arms Warriors in particular, what I noticed was, when taking a look at someone, like, what are the bills that they play? What, what do they like to do? When I do a bit of my research, I saw that there's just not a lot of Arms Warrior representation over the last few weeks. Just not a lot. Majority of warriors that are DPS are, for the most part, Fury. There's not as many arms as there were like, like beginnings of Alpha and even in the early, early days of Beta when they finally got all the different hero specs and all these things like implemented. So warriors have seen a bit, or at least arms warriors have seen a bit of a downgrade. Does not mean that this is what's going to happen to the spec once the actual game comes out, but 
it is one of those trends that is interesting to note and follow over on the beta specifically because sometimes those trends do end up kind of making their way to life not necessarily in the same way like survival hunters for example they got really really good over in the beta a very popular pick and have gained more popularity and more acceptance amongst the community on the live realms but they're not like replacing beastmaster or marksmanship hunters by any measure personally for me over the last few expansions i usually default to playing arms warrior it sometimes is the underdog spec compared to fury which generally tends to be more popular but the more time i spend with warrior i i really do end up like a fury a lot more i don't really know how i feel about arms as much but i definitely don't find it nearly as fun personally that being said the tuning is by no means final and i am hoping that this isn't indicative of like where arms words is going to be hopefully this kind of low representation does not make its way over to the live realms and ideally i would like for all different hero specs or i guess class specs rather to be playable and enjoyable and performing at relatively similar playing field to one another Though while Fury is technically getting some buffs, Arms Warrior is getting some nerfs, Prot Warrior in particular, they've gone through a quite a number of changes. So the biggest thing that happened to Prot Warrior in particular recently, uh, I guess over in recent few weeks, is this global tank nerf, where tanks are essentially becoming a little bit more squishier, where they're going to be a little bit more reliant on a healer, they're not going to be as self-sustainable, they're not going to completely nullify damage and heal themselves the entire time, they're not going to be independent of group gameplay to make sure that healers don't fall behind or don't like not get brought in anymore because that's kind of what we've been seeing recently with aug almost taking over the support role without really need for the healer in some cases some extreme cases than anything but probably in particular i feel like with this global take nerf came out swinging and came out kind of like a made it out like a bandit more than anything the only other tank that i think made it out better than arm prod in particular maybe is brewmaster because they've actually gotten more armor better stagger and better magic stagger so they're no longer just dying immediately having to utilize all of the cooldowns just to live instead they're just sustaining damage and are actually playable they're not just melting instantly Protection Pal Warrior in particular has uh, seen a very, very similar trend though because the spec itself has always been one that's reliant off of a healer. It doesn't have natural self-healing, but it has massive damage reductions and a massive array of cooldowns that can deal with any situation. Match damage, which is they're not amazing at, but they have moments where they can just completely reduce a good portion of it completely. They can modify their health to give themselves a little bit extra of a buffer. They have a fantastic set of big defenses like a massive wall to just flat out reduce the damage they take, but also quite quite a lot of damage on their own as well as a really good way to mitigate damage passively with the ignore pain ability and with warriors always being reliant on healer that didn't really change too much they made him a little squishier but really not by much especially after all the different tunings we've seen for dungeons for prod specifically we really saw a buff to the basic abilities such as their shield slam ability so that ability hits a little bit harder eight percent more damage the melee damage like auto attacks as well as all ability damage buffed by 30% across the board, which is like, wow, okay, we're reducing some of the defense, but man, are we giving, my, giving the spec back quite a lot of damage, and it is noticeable. On top of it, certain abilities like Revenge, which sometimes prop warriors tend to like struggle with, do I spend my rage on revenge or do you just bolster and tank up as much as I can? You may actually want to be very careful with that rage and start using revenge quite often. They buffed it by 25%. Ability of Execute, which gives them quite a significant amount of, or not insignificant amount of single target rate damage. The execute buffed up by 50%. Devastator as the ability also got buffed up by 25%. So that's a lot of their auto attack damage, auto attack uh, effectiveness. Your shield charge ability, the primary damage that you deal to the primary target is amped by 25%, which gives it like satisfying, big, meaty crit damage kind of combo. And you combined together with something like a batter and ram that could be a significant bit of overall single target damage but also ravage your damage increased by 25 percent so the spec so buffs upon buffs upon buffs all across the board and now that they're buffing up mountain theta a little bit yeah they're reducing the damage of thunder blast a little bit but i mean the basic auto attack damage together with gathering clouds which you already play into anyway that is a significant bit of like overall just damage that you're able to do it is scaling a little bit diff actually no it's probably it's not scaling differently it's probably because i don't actually have weapons on this thing uh that's because i'm in combat isn't it yeah they'll probably do it if it were to switch over to prod and look at the numbers now now that even yeah it's it's a, it's a lot better now but yeah it already has like a synergy 
that has been pretty well established before and that passive damage is definitely welcome. The Buster Colossus can also make him a little bit more interesting with arms getting all this flurry of damage buffs and especially with uh, Revenge getting buffed up. I wonder if there's an opportunity for Colossus Warriors to shine, maybe in pure raid situations where they don't like need a lot of defense and instead they can maybe utilize a lot of like off tanking and mostly an offensive build to have like mad execute windows that would be really, really fun to see during progression but prop warrior stocks are really really high a lot of people are enjoying them right now everybody's having a blast with it and everybody who's played prot right now in the beta sings praises of it because it didn't really change too much with this global tank nerf essentially it retains the same playstyle, but it still has all those layers of layers of layers of defenses that you could put up after a massive pull or really really dangerous sketchy pull and just basically reduce all damage down to zero essentially you take so little damage with all those cooldowns rolling in because they didn't necessarily decrease the impact of those cooldowns rather than the passive tanking benefits. And if you end up diverting a lot of your rage into more defense with ignore pain and then a little bit of revenge, whatever you are fully, fully stabilized, it can give you quite a significant bit of overall damage. And overall, it feels like it gives protection warrior a bit more impact. There has always been a little bit of a discussion with Prop Warrior, like how good could it be when it comes to dungeon content? Because out of all the tanks, it doesn't necessarily bring too many unique things to the table. Has an AoE fear, has an AoE stun, but like Demon Hunters have the same thing. Prop Warriors have very, very similar stuff like this. Bear Druids have very, very similar cooldowns to AoE disruptions, I guess. So Prop Warrior, the only thing that it really brings that is unique to it, besides potential for a lot of damage is maybe spell reflect that's really about it so it definitely puts it in a weird spot compared to some of the other tanks in terms of what overall does it bring to the group in terms of group utility and protection doesn't really bring that much that being said raw damage is something that was really noticed back during the very first season of dragonflight and i wonder if this raw damage is going to help him shine a little bit within war within as well i would love to see for protection warrior to get some kind of a or group wide utility for five man content just something to really make them stand out so that bear druids are bring something unique to them the sigils brought by demon hunters the crowd control as well as the uh off healing and support skills brought in by protection paladin the brewmaster and the uh, ability of a ring of peace to disrupt enemies and then a good set of offensive power that it could output as well just there's got to be something that protection warrior gotta bring that is unique compared to all of these other tanks because it's actually a very very fun playstyle. i'm just hoping that protection does not get left in the dust which has been kind of the trend of it uh depending on the expansion but yeah the lack of group utility specifically has always been one of the things that ends up causing its own downfall but i kind of want to pass it out to you guys when it comes to protection warrior specifically i don't play that much protection warrior but if you do what do you think they need in order to give them that it factor that puts them on the same same standing as all the other tanks because i've heard it for years protection warriors just does not have enough utility compared to other tanks for five man content specifically what do you think that thing what do you think that utility should be if they were to add one tomorrow or even next week what do you think they necessarily need in order to really help them stand out from the crowd would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below it is an incredibly fun tank it's like i'm glad that i checked it out this week in particular it is such a blast to play in particular just the raw gameplay of it all but what do you think would help it stand out apart from all of the other things in the game let me know that thoughts in the comments down below but as always, I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope all of you enjoyed. Really would love to hear and see some discussion in the comments section down below. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a like. I would very much appreciate it. It lets my channel reach out to more people in the algorithm. It helps me out tremendously. Also, join our Discord community. Probably the best place to have these kind of discussions or just reach out to me directly. DMs are always open. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see all of you guys in the next one.